Oh wow, I look rather stately in these glasses. Oh, that's right. Well, first of all, Merry Christmas, everyone. Or, I guess... Oh, I should find that. Darn it. I should make that... I have to make that an image of Merry Delete Miss. Or Merry Christmas, everyone. My name is Hobo Tom. You know, it must be somewhat early in the morning because I still have my glasses on. I haven't put my eyes in yet. Um, this is going to be a pretty quick video because I'm just going to go through raw. You guys know the deal. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Um, today's Monday. Or, well, probably by the time this video goes up, it'll be Tuesday. It'll be Christmas, and that means you, there was some Monday Night Raw going on last night. And it's kind of Christmas, so this is going to be a quick video, so I'll get right to the point of things for a change. And ladies, if you want to spend Christmas with a very dapper man, and have everything for you on Christmas Day, I'm the one. Maybe. I hope. Wish. Um, Christmas has just me right now because of my current job. It's the one day I have off. So let's talk about some pro wrestling. Um, Monday Night Raw, it was, it was taped. So I kind of knew what the spoilers were. So this is going to be kind of quick. We have Elias. Again, he has a, is a great show opener. Started singing a song. It was fun. The crowd was getting into it. And this led to the first match of the... Miracle on 34th Street Street Fight, or the Street Fight on 34th Street. Whatever they want to call it. It was a kind of gimmick match. Yeah, and just like Thanksgiving food fight. Uh, the Halloween Brawl. Again, it's a, it's a fun match. It was Bobby Lashley versus Elias. Um, again, this year kind of holiday gimmick match. It was fun. Um, Leo Rush. Um, it, was, it, it was a good match overall. Again, you have a powerful person versus a powerful person. It's fun. Um, they're definitely getting the money's worth out of this feud. So it keeps on going back and forth, which is good. And it'll probably end probably around the Rumble, I think. I don't see this going on much longer. Um, Leo Rush. Leo Rush has to wash those knees because he ate some knees when he came off the Frog Splash. And it's a gimmick match. It's, it's, it's no DQ match. Um, there was a good Lego spot. I like that Lego spot. Legos are not the most painful thing, but if you've ever stepped on that one wrong Lego piece before, you know that hurts. So that was fun. And um, then there were fire extinguishers. There was, there was a bowling ball to the groin. That's always a classic spot. Um, eventually, Elias did pour a whole bowl of eggnog. Ooh. On Leo Rush. Eggnog's one of those one things that I only like kind of once a year, right around this time of year, between th any time between Thanksgiving and probably New Year's, I'll have like one bottle of eggnog, and then I'm like, good for the rest. So, but this was overall, it was a fun opening match. This is a good quality cheeseburger match. And then the next match was actually amazing. It featured the glorious, glorious Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. And who are coming out, they're getting to be a much better tag team, mainly because they're doing things much more in tandem. They come out, they do the glorious thing together. Um, they, they went through the ropes together. Do it the same way. That's the way tag teams should be. It just shouldn't be, yeah, you go in, I go in, we'll do something, we do our own thing. No, they're actually really gelling as a tag team, which is really good. Bob Rood, he's finally doing stuff on TV. Besides nonsense. And hey, Gable's a great tag team partner. I mean, when he was with American Alpha, oh, I can't even forget what his partner's name. Chad Gable. And Jason Jordan, that's right. Jason Jordan's still off with a neck injury. I don't... Neck injuries are funny. They're not something you really want to play with. But again, this was a great classic tag team, ta tag team match. 
I mean, both teams understand the idea of tag team wrestling. It was fun. It was enjoyable. It was um, even, uh, I think Corey Graves brought up, it reminded him, or at least the revival reminded him of the Minnesota Wrecking Crew, Ole and Arn Anderson. You start referencing Ole and Arn Anderson in tag team wrestling, you must be doing something right. Yeah, it was a really fun match. Um, Rude eventually did get the pin. He he actually got to clean house. He got to he got to clear the ring. Rude and Gable win. This was a super fun match. Why couldn't they do this all the time on Raw? This was a surf and turf match. So whatever the McMahons are doing, it actually worked really until this point where it got kind of muddly and confusing. So I guess there was one match. I don't know if it was one match or two match. I was kind of confused by this next kind of segment. Because I thought it was going to be a three-way eliminate, a, a three-way, a, a triple threat match. And it was Drew McIntyre versus Dolph Ziggler versus Finn Balor, which is good because all three of these, all three of these guys don't like each other for their own good mo for their own motivational reasons. Um, I think Drew first gets tossed out of the ring by Dolph and Finn because again they're smart. Hey, let's get rid of the big guy and then we can go at it. Smart thinking. Why have the biggest guy in the ring? Get him out of there. Um, Dolphin Finn uh, uh, eventually get Drew out first, and then they put on a really good match. Drew, however, is not going to be kept outside the ring too long. Where's my pen? And gets back in, takes out everyone. Again, in true big guy fashion. Drew with those stomps is amazing. That headbutt is great. Uh, Drew did like an Alabama slam on, I, I don't even think that's what it was. He's like picked him, yeah, yeah, he just picked him up, dropped him face first or chest first. He just slammed Dolph onto the pin and that was a great spot. I'll tell you what, that, um, eventually Finn gets the upper hand. That coup de gras, that landing, that has always looked awkward for some reason. But in this part, and this is where I get kind of confused and things get jumbled. So again, feel free to comment and say, what were you watching? Again, I was kind of starting off on Christmas Eve dinner. So I was back and forth a little bit. So I might have missed something important. Hey. Sometimes stuff happens in life, and you have to step away from the from the TV. But for this part, been one, and I'll be honest, I was thoroughly entertained with what I saw. And I'm gonna I'm gonna count this over for the next part. Because then they showed a preview, or a recap of what happened. I think they kind of did some wonky stuff here, and then it was like another triple threat match, and in this one. I think Dolph won, so I'm kind of confused. Everything was really good, though. And if everything is really good and if I'm only somewhat confused, you know what? This was fun. This is another, I almost want to say surf and turf, but then it got kind of weird, or I stepped away and missed something. So I'm going to be honest. Because I was confused, it's probably more so on me. This is a good cheeseburger match. And then, I guess we had to have the women involved. And I know there was a match later or next that involved Natalia and Ronda Rousey. That would have satisfied me as far as the women being in, in, in the show concerned. Because this just seemed like a holla, holla, holla match. Um, it was Ember Moon, Sasha Banks, and Bailey 
versus Mickey James, Alicia Fox, and Dana Brooke. And th th there was some good stuff. Um, Mickey James is, is really good as far as selling. Uh, she, she knows how to kind of throw herself off the ring, which is good. Dana Brooke looks good too. She has that like weird platinum purple hair. I mean, they're making her look str look stronger. Um, again, it was a it was a it was a three way. So again, everyone kind of gets their spots in. Uh, eventually, it did end because I want to say the only thing with Alicia Fox with blonde hair and Dana Brooke being kind of blondish is that if you kind of move away, it looks, or if you look out of the side of your eye, it's really hard to tell. And Mickey James has, has a darker hair color. But I want to say when Ember Moon hit the eclipse, Bailey hit the bank statement, and then, oh no, Sasha Banks hit the bank statement, and then Bailey hit the Bailey to Belly to finish off for the pin. I want to say it was Alicia Fox who's who's eating the pen a lot. She's a lot better than that. Could have had Mickey James or even Dana. Not Dana Brooke. She's just finally coming back. She has to. She has to get some wins though. Or I don't know. We'll see. Um, and then the Riot Squad came in clean house. It was okay. I mean, this is again. This is a ham sandwich match. And I'm kind of speeding through this. Um, there was a good Paul Heyman segment. Uh, he starts singing, I, of course, making fun of Braun. Never want to do that. It's a bad idea. Braun comes out, puts the deer antlers on Paul Heyman, puts a red nose, starts to him. Kind of bullies him a little bit, but it's it's it's, it's fun and in good taste. Can you say that? Bullying is fun and good taste? Only in pro wrestling can you say that, I think. But yeah, that was a that was a fun thing. Um you had Vince McMahon as Santa Claus. Um he started around about bad Santa, so that was kind of fun. Then we had Natalia versus Ronda, which was a really good match. That was, it was a very technical match. This is one of those matches where I think it almost belongs in SmackDown, only because this is a true... This felt more like a sport wrestling match, and you could genuinely, genuinely see Ronda's apprehension about hurting her friends. So again, there's a conflict. This is a wrestling match. My tile's on the line. I don't really want to hurt Natalia, though. And Natalia's like, you know what? I've done this so often. I want that belt. We'll be friends still. I want to win that. So it, it called that story. It was a very good technical match. Um, Natalia did start to get a little nasty, though, which is, which is a good thing. Um, Didn't, yeah, I haven't seen this kind of story yet. So, again, yeah, it, it was pretty good, though. I mean, I do like the fact that Natalia was putting submission after submission, and she even brought back the Indian Deathlock. I haven't seen the Indian Deathlock since the days of Wahoo McDaniels and Chief J. Strongbow. Wow. I love it. That's kind of a nostalgia factor. Way back to like the AWA? Wow, that's that's going back a while. I mean that was really cool. Um when the match was over, eventually Ron just realized it's like, hey, um I I, I do have to I, I do want to retain my title. Very apprehensive about putting that arm bar on Natalia. Um Natalia did get the sharpshooter in, she got the abdominal stretch, she did like the like, like the royal octopus holding everything. So, so Natalia actually did, did a lot. Um, again, Ronda did a lot of submissions too. So this was a really good, fun match. Ronda very apprehensive about using that armbar on Natalia. So she eventually did get her in the armbar. Natalia quick that, tapped up very quickly, and she just let go. She's like, okay, match over, done. 
Uh, this was fun, though, because it told a story. And then, of course, they were like, Let's go get out. So it was fun, though. It was, this was another good surf and turf match. And Ronda's character work is actually growing more and more. Now we're seeing more character development, which is good. Because hopefully what I'll see when I go to Raw in about two weeks. January 7th, you can see this guy here at the Amway Center in Orlando, Florida. Where he determined that I'm going to get the cheap seats. I'll be up there in the hobo section. Eating jujus. Throwing dots at bad matches. No, I won't do that because I'll get kicked out for sure. Kicked out and beaten. Then you have a Dean Ambrose segment. Eh. And then the next match was Ginger Mahal versus Heath Slater. And it was fun. It was fun. This was like the... I think this match only lasted like five minutes. Um, they kind of got their moves in. And then, to what do my wandering eyes to appear? Santa Claus showed up. And if you're watching my video, Corporate Tom... One of the six faces of time was actually beat Santa Claus. After he beat Santa Claus, he said, Christmas is canceled. Christmas is deleted. Get back to work. So, Santa Claus comes out, and it's Rhino. His buddy's back. And that was good. So, again, it is what it, it was what it was. You know, it actually did put a smile on my face. This is a ham, another good ham sandwich match. And then the main event of the evening was actually okay. It wasn't anything spectacular. They probably really should have had the Natalia Ronda Rousey as the main event. Again, this is where WWE gets things a little weird, is that they have a odd match order. And you're like, but this match is that should be like hidden in the middle somewhere. And only like five minutes, not, not not ten minutes. This match was really good. This should have opened the show. This match was so so. This could have been in the middle. This match was better. This should have been at the end. So they just do weird time or weird, weird ordering of matches. And that's kind of my been my number one complaint about the WWE for a while, especially on Raw. They they kind of have a weird order, and I think that actually hurts the viewership because the viewers see something bad they see something okay they see something bad and they're like eh I'm not watching this anymore click they start off hot and kind of do a slow burn and then at the end you have this match and you're like oh that was really good you know what? I'm going to come back next week and see what they do but no so they had on um, the main event they had Seth Rollins Versus Baron Corbin. Um, Seth is actually really good in the ring. Is the My one thing with Seth. When Seth gets his scripted lines. They sound terrible. I mean Samoa Joe. I could write for Samoa Joe. And Samoa Joe would make it sound amazing. Seth. Eh -eh. Not so much. Great wrestler. Promo skills. Eh. Depends what creative gives him. And when it's really fully scripted, it's not great. Um, Baron Corman is pretty good. This was a much better match than, than the table ladders and the chairs between Seth and Dean. Again, maybe it's on TV. They don't have the time for all the rest holds. Or at least wrestles with purpose. If you're going to put someone in a headlock, at least try and crank away at it. And, if, I mean, no one's going to tap out of a headlock. But you can make someone feel pretty darn uncomfortable. You give them nuggies. Yes. The five-knuckle rake across the head. That should be one move for Dean Ambrose. It's, it's just hurts and it's annoying. Oh, again, this is kind of a weird order. 
it was a good back and forth, but for the most part, this was a good cheeseburger match. And that was Raw in a nutshell. Wow, I've actually gotten through the 20 minutes on this video. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And again, a Merry Christmas to everyone. And I'll be posting my Tuesday Smackdown, my Tuesday night Smackdown, because Smackdown is moving soon, I think.